Welcome back to our continuing look at the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. Now, the only reason that this is a two-part Bible review, I don't think I've ever done a two-part Bible review, actually. The first review was looking at what is the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. I'm not going to be going through all of the features or explaining what the chains are, anything like that. You can catch that on the previous video. In this video, though, I just wanted to compare the previous edition of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible that Zondervan published with the updated and revised edition. Now, as I said before, a viewer was nice enough to send me the prior editions that Zondervan published, and you may still see these out. So I wanted to look at both of these and just show you the difference. This is the New American Standard 1977 translation, and this is the ESV translation. So let's look real quick at the difference just between the two different translations of the previous version. And then we'll do a comparison of these versions, which you're going to find with the revised and updated edition, the new edition. And so as we get set to do that, if you haven't already subscribed, we would love for you to do so. It really helps this channel grow. And along with liking and sharing and commenting on Disciple Dojo videos, when you subscribe, that tells YouTube, hey, we, we want to see more of this channel. And what really gets that message across is when you enable notifications. Some people don't know this. When you subscribe to a YouTube channel, that's great, but YouTube won't automatically tell you when new videos come out. And the reason that I mention that, especially in these two videos that we've been doing on the Thompson Chain, is because in a future live stream, I'm gonna be giving away both of these copies that were donated to Disciple Dojo to viewers. We're going to do it on a live stream, and I've also got a stack of other Bibles behind me that I'm going to be giving away, but the only way you'll know about those upcoming live streams is if you have notifications enabled when you subscribe. I've had a lot of people comment and say, I didn't even know there was a live stream. I didn't know you were doing this. I would have jumped on. Well, I mean, I don't know how to get it out there any more than we do by posting it on the YouTube page as a post, by sharing it on our Instagram and our Facebook pages. Both of those are just at Disciple Dojo and announcing it as a short here on the channel beforehand. So the only way that you'll know for sure when a Disciple Dojo live stream comes up, as well as any of our other videos, is by making sure you have notifications enabled. I know a lot of our viewers aren't super savvy when it comes to YouTube. YouTube. Some of you just click on links that you see on your social media. So I just want to let you know, if you want to make sure that you don't miss when we're going to be giving these away, when we're going to be doing other giveaways, or just when new Disciple Dojo content is out, including our teaching videos, enable notifications. YouTube is not going to show you those on your main feed most of the time. This episode is also brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar Wild Cherry. If you're looking for a, do I'm just kidding, it's not even remotely a sponsor. We don't have sponsors. The way people support Disciple Dojo is they give on our website. And so if you'd like to do that and become a Disciple Dojo partner, help us out financially, keep this ministry going, greatly appreciated. Okay, enough of all that. Let's real quick look at the two previous editions of Thompson Chain, and then let's compare it to the updated and revised edition. <laughs> So here are the two that were sent to me by a very kind viewer. Again, New American Standard, 1977. And that's the one that uses thee, thy, and thou in the poetic text when they're addressing God. And then the ESV. I'm not sure which version of the ESV this one is. You may not know there are a lot of different ESV revisions over the years. So I'm just going to look real quick and verify. I think this is the ESV 2016, the newest edition. And the way you can tell is in that edition of the ESV in Genesis 3.16, where God talks to the woman, it says, your desire shall be contrary to your husband but he shall rule over you. That was a change that the ESV committee made back when they decided that they were then going to freeze the text and make this the forever version of the ESV. Thankfully, they backtracked on that because that's a ridiculous policy for any translation committee to adopt. But this is the wording. This is how you know they translate your desire shall be contrary to your husband, which of course the Genesis text doesn't say that. That's a highly interpretive decision. And the earlier versions of the ESV did not read that way, though they did have it in a footnote. But so that lets us know. And also, yeah, it confirms it right there. ESV text edition 2016. So this is, to my knowledge, the newest edition of the ESV. Now, unfortunately, my camera is not quite wide enough to lay both of these out completely where you can see them. But 
just to show you the difference. And there's not a ton. I mean, these, this is the same edition. So the difference is going to be in the translation. Preface to the ESV, forward to the New American Standard Bible. Then after the preface to the ESV, you have the Thompson Chain Reference Study Bible, an introduction and explanation how to use it. In the NASB, after the forward, you have the preface to the NASB, the principles of translation that the NASB uses. Then you have a note about a century of rich biblical tradition, and then the preface to the Thompson Chain Reference Study Bible. So in the NASB, the opening section is 26 pages of introductory material. In the ESV, it's 29 pages of introductory material, and they're arranged a little differently. But then in both, you come to the Old Testament, and then both have this drawing of the different books of the Old Testament. And as we'll see in a minute, this is not in the new revised and expanded edition. Now I'll put these side by side so you can see the pages laid out. NASB, ESV. First thing you should notice, this is in paragraphs. This is versified. In the New American Standard, the way that they tell you this is a paragraph break is they put the verse number in bold. So you have the chapter that begins, every verse is its own line. You can see a break after each verse, whereas in the ESV, it's paragraph. Now, because of that layout, that's going to affect the marginal notes. So these marginal notes, for the most part, as far as I can tell, the same content is there. It's just a little more spread out in the New American Standard because each verse gets its own line. Whereas the ESV, things are kind of compacted in a paragraph format, so the notes are a little more crowded. Now, another small difference, I'll zoom in here so you can see, in the New American Standard, at the beginning of Genesis, it's a little bit different. It says, author Moses, parentheses, commonly accepted, and that's the key number where you could find the analysis, 4223, then keyword, beginning, and then that's it then it actually starts with the chain reference notes. In the ESV, it says author, Moses, commonly accepted, it's not in parentheses, it's just written, analysis of the book, and those numbers are the same, but then keyword beginning, key verse 315. New American Standard doesn't have that key verse that the ESV does. So there are little tiny differences like that. I'm not a font expert, but the font that the New American Standard is printed in looks a little bit bigger than the font that the ESV is printed in. The ESV looks to be a little more, I mean, barely noticeable, but you know, if you're looking at a review like this, you probably want to know about these little minute details. So there's a little bit of a difference in the layout, not tremendously. All the material is the same. Other than that, the biggest difference that you might notice is page count. Because the NASB is laid out versified, it ends at page 1611, whereas the ESV, which is paragraph and more condensed, it ends at page 1387. So the NASB is over 200 pages thicker, and that's just, again, because it's a versified layout. Now, even though this is 200 pages less than this, they still are pretty much the same width. So I'm guessing that this was thinner paper, but it's not noticeable. Okay, so now with that out of the way, that's just what you'll know. And the KJV and the NKJV and IV, they would probably have those same type of differences among the translations. But now let's look at the revised and updated edition because it is significantly different than either of the earlier editions. The dust jackets are similar, though not entirely the same. But when you take them away, you'll notice the new updated edition, nothing on the front. The side is slightly different, but it tells you this is the 1995 text, this is the 1977 text. Right off the bat, one difference. This one has two bookmarks. This one just has one. That's an improvement. Now let's open it up and you'll see these are a very different. Nice presentation page on the older version. The newer one doesn't have that. Automatically, that's the first thing you see. This has red and black. This is all black. This edition was being published through 2021, I believe. This edition came out in 2023. So you have the table of contents. Again, two colors. So things that are like subject headings or keyword numbers or all those things are in red in this. In the earlier version, they're usually just put in bold print or maybe italics. Here you can compare the comprehensive Bible helps. And if you saw the previous video, that's all the stuff in the back of the Thompson Train reference, about 600 pages worth of material. Then the preface, principles of translation. Then the old edition just went right into the different ways of studying using the Thompson Chain. The new edition 
has an explanation of what has been updated. So here are the key features. The two indexes have been renamed. So in the previous video, we saw that the indexes that you need to know to use the Thompson Chain Reference System are the alphabetical index and the numerical index. Well, that's what they're called now. In the original edition, the alphabetical index was called the general index and the numerical index was called the index of chain topics. That was a little confusing. Zonovan recognized that, and so they updated it and said, let's just call them what they are. One's an alphabetical, one's numerical. Big improvement, this general index versus index of chain topics, you just, it doesn't tell you what they are, what the difference is. It also tells you other updates. There were some chains in the previous edition that weren't complete. They didn't have all of the chain verses. So in the newer edition, all the chains have been reviewed and they've been expanded to include all of the relevant verses. In previous editions, some of the marginal references, like Thompson would have references in the margin and they didn't always have chain topics to go with them. Now the numerical index includes all of the topics mentioned in the margins. And then one of the most noticeable changes besides the visual layout is they've moved the book introductions. So before Genesis, you have all of the information introducing the book of Genesis on the page before it, and then you turn the page and you have Genesis. In the previous edition, you didn't have any of that information. You had this little bit here at the top, which gave a couple of things about the text, but that's it. You would have to turn all the way to the back to this analyses of biblical books and find 4223, the book of Genesis. And it's right here. And then there's Exodus. So this is all in the back in the older edition. The numbers between the earlier editions and the later editions are also off. You see in the new edition, Genesis book introduction is number 4220. In the earlier edition, it's 4223. So there's a discrepancy of like three to five numbers in all of the chain topics. I think that had to do with the updated edition condensed some things that in previous editions were separate chains, but I'm not a Thompson power user. So check out the Thompson chain blog or Zondervan website or something or other Bible reviewers here on YouTube that do deep dives on this. Now, before we look at the comprehensive Bible helps in the back and what's changed there, you'll notice right off the bat, there's no Old Testament drawing. And this is one of the biggest differences between the previous versions and the updated and revised edition. This edition does not have any of these hand-drawn illustrations and charts that the older edition had. It has the same content. There are lists and charts that give this information, but they just aren't these type of hand-drawn illustrations. Now, in terms of layout, here is visually the difference. The newer edition uses the comfort print font. It's thicker, it's not as Times New Roman-ish. The columns are wider, the margins are narrower. They've taken these lines out, so it doesn't have as much of a like schematic look overall, at least that's how this looks to me. There are fewer footnotes in the NASB 1995 edition as opposed to the 1977 edition. In the older edition, the chain numbers were first and then the next verse in the chain. In the newer edition, the topic is first, it's in bold, then the chain number is in red, and then you have the next verse in the chain. So in terms of just layout visually and more intuitively, the layout overall in the updated edition, in my opinion, is a vast improvement in every way possible. Now here's another example, what I'm talking about with the, the kind of hand-drawn illustration charts being presented in a different way. In the old edition, when you turn to the New Testament, you have this hand-drawn two books with the link being Christ between them and then 400 silent years. Now, obviously, Apocrypha scholars would take issue with this, that there's those 400 years were anything but silent. However, you have this illustration here. In the new edition, that same material has been put as a chart. So it's the same material, Christ, 400 silent years, Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament, same material. This is just laid out to look more like a study Bible, whereas this looks more like a kind of a mid-century pamphlet or tract that you might get at a revival or something like that. So here is where we come to the most differences between the two editions that you're going to find, and that's at the back. So in the previous edition, the general index, which again in the new edition is the alphabetical index, that's the first thing you come to. Then after the general index, you have principles of Bible study, best methods of study. 
then the index of chain topics, which again, in the new edition, this is called the alphabetical index. In the updated edition, before you have either index, you have these principles of Bible study and best methods of study. And again, it's the same material put in a different visual format to make it easier to read. Now here's a comparison of the numerical index, formerly the chain index. Now we looked at this one in depth in the last video, so I won't go into all of that, but you can just see the difference, how they're laid out. Different font, spacing is different, more user-friendly. This is a little more intimidating, just visually a little more confusing. So in the earlier edition, after the chain index, then you had some of these like drawings and figures. So here you had a drawing that represented Thompson's view of sort of the divine, what he says is the gradual revelation and publication of the law. You don't have that in the new edition. That's been taken out. Then in the old edition, you had this sort of schematic visual layout, kind of confusing, intimidating. I mean, these look like notes from a class you might have sat in on, but it's not intuitive what it's showing. Now, in the old edition, they had a section 4220, and it was an overview of English Bible translations, how we got them, starting with the original manuscripts and then how the different translations came about based on different textual traditions. Then there's multiple pages of the different versions, early copies, ancient versions, and then English versions, and then English versions since 1901. So these would be like modern translations, and they have notes about a number of modern Modern English translations. In the new updated edition, that's all been taken out. So that was 4220 in this edition. In the new edition, remember 4220 was the introduction to the book of Genesis, and that's been moved back to the front. So there's that's where part of these numerical discrepancies between the prior edition and the newer edition are because some things have been taken out of this edition and other things have been expanded in the newer one. But actually, thought this was a helpful discussion. I think it would have been good if they had put something in the new edition about the different versions and translations of the Bible throughout history, because that's something people have a lot of questions about. I'm not sure why they chose to get rid of that. Then the older edition, again, it had some of these illustrations that aren't very self-explanatory. This one's called the Messianic Stars. And so it says the prophetic promises of coming Messiah are shown in this drawing. They appeared like bright stars in the different periods of the dark night of Hebrew history. These are just lists of Messianic promises. Then there's this other strange drawing, the Temple of Truth. And it says in the Sermon on the Mount, Christ first enumerated the eight progressive steps by which we can reach the higher altitudes of spiritual life. That's weird. He next expounded the fundamental truths of the kingdom of God. The drawing illustrates Jesus' matchless teachings under the figure of the temple of truth and the steps leading up to it. The pillars represent the order in which he presented his great doctrinal principles. I mean, this is just an outline of the Sermon on the Mount. This is idiosyncratic, we'll say. And so that does not appear in the updated edition. The condensed outline of the Bible is in both editions. 4222A in the previous edition. It's now 4219A. Same material, just laid out a little differently. And then you have this periods of biblical history and presented. This is how it looked in the old edition. Same material in the new edition. And in the old edition, these are the book introductions, which in the new edition has been moved to the front of each book in the actual text. And then you have some other kind of interesting drawings. Um, this one, 4234A, the diagram portrays the moral heights and depths in the lives of the kings of Judah. And these patterns were followed by their people leading to the downfall of the kingdom. So righteousness, sin, idolatry, righteousness, sin, idolatry. And these are the different kings, but portrayed as mountaintops. That does not appear in the updated edition. And then you come to character studies. And so these major characters, you know, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, and there's some drawings, like here's a drawing of Noah's Ark. And again, the heights and depths in Jacob's life in the newer edition. So you have an updated illustration, though it doesn't have the measurements that the drawing actually has. And then you have maps, which you don't have in the older edition. This is Abraham's journey. Then you have the prominent characters and the meanings of their names in the old edition. You have that in the new edition as well. You have the history of the apostles. You have that. It's just been updated graphically. Then in the old edition, you have Isaiah's portrait of Christ and synoptic portraits of Christ. And then you have this page of John's portraits of Christ. And each, for some reason, is illustrated with a very dated 
illustration of Jesus. These kind of look like what you find in mid-century illustrations, like paintings you would see on fans in churches or maybe Catholic printed material. Very, very white Jesus, very European Jesus. I don't know why there were pictures here and not pictures for these. And there's a section on John as a picture gallery, different, I guess, pictures of Jesus that are presented in John, son of God, son of man, divine teacher, soul winner, great physician, bread of life, water of life, defender of weak, light of the world, etc. And you have Paul's portraits of Christ, Peter's portrait of Christ, the apocalyptic portraits of Christ. And then you have the calendar in the Christian era and approximate dates in the life of Jesus. So then you have Bible harmonies and illustrated studies. In the old edition, you have a lot of these drawings, a couple of maps, Things are just not laid out intuitively. That's the biggest thing that's been improved upon in the new edition. Readers and users are like, this doesn't exactly make sense. Unless you already know this stuff and are used to the material being presented in this way, it's just confusing. So the new edition does away with all of this kind of illustrated stuff but it keeps the material that it deems pertinent. So this map in the Journeys of Abraham, well, in the new edition, it's been included and the material is still there. It's just presented like this instead of sprinkled around all these random drawings. Earlier edition had this tree of Moses' life. So it just drew a tree and it just put all of the different events in his life hanging from the branches. And then it outlined them here on this page. In the new edition, it's just an overview of Moses' life. So all the material is outlined and it's laid out easier to read. Here's the old edition map, the journeys from Egypt to Canaan. The material is put again with these little illustrations. In the new edition, all that material has been simplified and the map has been updated. Same thing with Joshua, Joshua, Gideon and Samuel, Gideon and Samuel. Then the older edition had this tree of Jesus's life. So just like you have a tree of Moses's life, you have a drawing of a tree of Jesus's life. All the different years of his life, the different events kind of hung on the branches. And then a harmony of all the events. The new edition, they took out the tree drawing and you just have a harmony of the events. So this gives you a good understanding of the difference between these editions. This is kind of all encapsulated in two different views. Earlier edition looks like this. Updated edition looks like that. Earlier edition, illustrations, places of worship looks like this. Updated edition, illustration, places of worship looks like this. Now, besides that overview of English Bible translations and a um, section on the Apocrypha, another thing that was removed from the updated edition is the archaeological supplement. This was originally by G. Frederick Owens. It was revised by Dennis Cheek with the assistance of David Livingston and Edwin Yamauchi. And it was just a section all about archeological background of the Bible. And it's arranged alphabetically, Alexandria, the Tel El Amarna, Antioch. So just archeological background for all of these places, along with photos, illustrations, pictures. I'm not sure why this was removed. Possibly it was dated, possibly because Zondervan thought, well, we already have the cultural background study Bible and the illustrated Bible background commentary. So there's no reason to put this in another one. I don't know. I, I think that this is good material and if it was in need of updating, you know, it would have been good to do that, but I'm not exactly sure why they chose to remove it, but none of this is in the new edition. And that's probably the biggest omission that the revised and updated edition has made is taking all of this entire archaeology section out. I mean, it would have been cool to have this in the new edition. I mean, there's Masada, there's Madaba. I've actually seen this in person. It's gorgeous. The Sennacherib prism. This is important stuff. This is kind of stuff you want in a study Bible. So I can understand the updated edition taking out the illustrations. I mean, they're kind of cheesy. They're not intuitive. They don't bring clarity to the text. But this seems like something that should not have been left out because this does bring clarity to a lot of these names and places that otherwise are just weird sounding names on the page. But after that, they both have the concordance. And then the final difference, other than these random pages for taking notes, which are not in the previous edition, the final difference is the maps in the prior edition are the Kirkbride maps. The maps in the updated edition are the Zondervan maps. And they are, besides looking different, there are a few 
changes that have been made. I mean, you can see the Kirkbride edition map said archaeological sites in Palestine. The Zondervan map, archaeological sites in ancient Israel. I'm guessing that was done as much for political as for scholarly reasons. The two-page maps in this edition are easier to read. They're not broken up as much, whereas the two-page version in this one, you get a huge gutter space in between. The updated edition has a map of the Exodus and the Conquest. The prior edition does not. The previous edition had a map of Jerusalem in Old Testament times and then Jerusalem in New Testament times. The updated edition just has the map of Jerusalem in the time of Jesus. The prior edition has Paul's journeys in two different maps. The updated edition has all of his journeys in one map. The previous edition had the Holy Land today. The updated edition does not. It has a map of the Apostles' early travels. So those are the differences between the earlier edition of the Thompson Chain and the revised and updated edition. I'm going to say, I think this is an improvement over this in almost every way. I say almost because I think the archaeological supplement in this is good. And I think the overview of English Bible translations is good. Those are two things that were good ideas. They should have been carried over into this one. I don't know why they weren't. But Aside from that, getting rid of the dated random illustrations and kind of paintings of white Jesus, that was a great move. The graphic format is great. Comfort print. I saw somebody left a comment on one of my videos saying, I hate comfort print. That's insane. I just don't understand that. Just in every way, comfort print is easier to read than more classic traditional print. So of all the things to disapprove of, that one is the one that I just can't fathom graphically with the two colors having things in red again this one just reminds me of a phone book just the layout is sterile graphic design wise it's just kind of cluttered i mean again for something 50 60 years ago it's head and shoulders above what was out there i'm sure but in terms of visuals ease of use user friendliness i mean heck even including two bookmarks there's just the it's a massive improvement, the updated edition. So that's my recommendation. I don't think you should get an older edition. And if you have it and you like using it, I think you should update it and use the revised and updated edition. It's just better all around. So I hope this comparison was helpful. Again, if you didn't see the previous video where we looked at actually how to use this thing, check that out. But for those of you that have wanted for so long for me to review the Thompson Jane Reference Bible, hopefully these two videos are enough. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think? What did I miss? What do you think about either edition? Comments and respectful criticism, always welcome here in the dojo. But that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. As always, keep training.